I don't usually do product reviews unless it's something I'm really adamant about. And uh, normally, I don't think I've ever done a negative product review. But here goes. I got some orders for some holsters that I didn't have access to guns to mold. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to order some blue guns, dummy guns. And I got a blue gun SR40 here. And of the two, this is the better. It's got SR40 in the side. Got a ruger down here where it's supposed to be. We even got the, let me see that, Ruger, Prescott, Arizona, 40 Smith & Wesson, serial number, all the safety crap they make, lawyers make them put on guns nowadays, but we also have this horrendous casting line all the way down the top. Just ridiculous. The sight's all jacked up. The muzzle somebody just hacked off. The magwell they literally took off a hacksaw. It's all full of these little air bubbles. These must be resin cast. And like a whole part, you can see that, of the mag release is gone. Like the corner's just gone. There's like air bubbles all the way around it. There's one right there. There's air bubbles all over the grips. They're really hard to see on camera, but yeah, see those big pockets all over the place? Just poor. And there's, there's nice some knife kits. They sent me this fancy pine dough with the wrapper still on it for a slate channel. It's going to take some whittling, but. That was thoughtful. I had this multi molds from Knife Kids, and what a piece of shit. This thing is garbage. You can see where they packed the trigger well with modeling clay. And I would have left it thinner. There's not a lot of purchase there for Kydex. I might machine that back out. And the Magwell. There's like modeling clay oozing out. Look at that. They just schmucked modeling clay in there so they could cast it, and they didn't even like take the time to smush the clay back off. And the they their big sell point is it's already got the sight channel filled in. Well, they did the same thing I would have done and used a dull or a pencil and put masking tape over it, and you can actually see the tape wrinkles covering it. Look at that. You can see the wrinkles in the striations. You can see the wrinkles in the ejection port. These front ones are bad and this muzzle is just non-existent. I would be ashamed of myself. These are sixty dollars. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I charged a customer sixty dollars. Or something as shitty. Half of striations in the grip are air pockets. They're gone. The ones in the back strap are just gone. They were never there. This side is no better. And the casting line is freaking horrid. And look at the back. What do you call that? Really? Really? For $60? This is an airsoft gun. I paid 11 bucks for it. It's exactly to spec of a 1911. Exactly. The only thing it's not is that. And if you had a 5.5 inch barrel 1911, it would be. Safety's a spec. Mag release is a spec. These grips actually fit on a 1911. The mainspring housing fits on a 1911. The spring inside fits on a 1911. It's not powerful enough, but it fits. The mag is mill spec. Well, lanyard loop, everything. It's 
All the parts fit on a regular one. It's crazy. Eleven bucks. You're gonna charge me sixty dollars for this? There's not even a parting line on it. I mean, granted, these are injection molded plastic. There's a little bit of a seam down here. I don't even think the camera will show it. I think a real 1911 has a bigger forge line. It's they're the only ones in the business, so they can get away with it. But just it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. That's what happens when you corner the market.